like them that have perished but the Lord has been gracious to us let all Israel know that it is he who has given you power to make wealth you have not done this because you are smart but because of the Lord Job says naked I came into the world and naked will I live all these are the things I have acquired and nothing if I do not know the Lord. So for us, it is not what we have. It is the Lord who is in us. We have been in places where we have been deported out of a foreign nation. We did nothing wrong. We were chased out, given an ultimatum to leave immediately. We left, but the Lord appeared to us. The Lord is our shepherd and we have never wanted because he has been our sure provider. He has been a direction in him we trust. We trust in him. We trust in him not because somebody told us a story but we have seen him at work. He has sustained us. He has looked after us. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That he who began a good work in us will bring it to completion. This is our confidence. Faithful is he who called us. This is our sure confidence. Then the Lord says to him, Ask what you want. But then he says, you've been kind to me. Verse 7, now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David. But I, I am a little child. Somebody say, I'm a little child. Because mostly once you begin to have prosperity and favor, you grow overnight. You forget that you are a child. What has made you attractive are the blessings of the Lord over your life. You know, when you look at this guy, probably he's looking okay right now, but he is looking okay because he is clothed with God's glory. He is clothed with God's righteousness. He is clothed with God's mercy and grace and favor. When you take it away, he's an ordinary person. So whatever I am is because of the Lord and I hold on to the Lord. Once I let go of God, I let go of everything I know and everything I have. I trust in him because he is God. Not by story, not by the song I have heard, but I have walked in him. I have seen the faithfulness of God. I'm a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding or wisdom or an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil for who is able to judge this great people of yours? Of course, in the following verses, we see how God now comes to respond to Solomon. The Bible says, because you have not asked for riches or anything else. Remember, he was given a blank check. And God says, because you did not go for material things, I will entrust you. Somebody say entrust and I pray that God should entrust you. But in order for God to entrust you, it is dependent on how you have walked with him. I will entrust you with riches. 
and honor. So what we notice here is the establishment of a king. But all this is happening to a guy who is calling himself a child. The blessings of God resided in him. It was in the house. But he needed to know how to unlock what was in the house. And I came to tell you, child of God, that we have come to a place where we feel void, where we feel helpless, where we feel like there is nothing else to live for. We are searching for answers. We are searching for solutions. We are searching for the way out. And we, we have gone on and consulted. But what we have forgotten was to search what was inside of us. The phone was not in the car. It was not in the office. It was in the house. And I came to remind you that everything you're looking for resides inside the house. You need to have wisdom to unlock what is inside of you. It is there. It is there in the house. Just look into your palms. Just stretch your hand and look in your palms. What do you see? Nkongole, Kaloba, Amashamo. What do you see? 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 If God has says he will bless the works of your hands, your hands are blessed. Your hands are prosperous. Your hands can handle anything. And your hands will handle everything that you want to have because the blessing is in the house. The blessing is not coming from Bangkok. The blessing is not coming from China. It is in the house. It is in the house. God did not release you here on earth empty. He loaded you with every tool that you needed in order to be successful. The blessing is in the house. But there will be a soul that we will notice that you and David is blessed. David didn't even know what was inside. But King Saul saw it. And this is what happens most of the times. You don't see what is inside of you. Somebody else will see it and will come at night naked to kill you so that you don't become what God intended you to become. Witches fight you because of what you can become. Satan fights you. He comes after you to steal, to kill, and to destroy because of what he sees in you. Now tell me which thief comes to steal from someone who has nothing. The Bible says the thief Take note of that. The thief who is the devil, who sees what you have, comes to steal. Stealing what? And you're saying, I don't have. He's not stupid. He knows what he's come for. He knows what he's come for. He comes to steal. What do you have that keeps the enemy awake all night without sleeping? What do you have? Somebody say, it's in the house. It's in the house, but you are feeling hopeless. You are, you are feeling helpless. You, you are feeling devastated and you are complaining. Yet, the devil is looking at that and say, I will not sleep until I kill that, until I steal that, so that this person becomes nothing. So, you are not nothing. You are only nothing when you decide to be nothing. Because God has endued you with all the benefits, all that you need to become. You can become a king. You can become a priest. You can become a mother. You can become a father. You can become a counselor. You can become a prayer warrior. You can become a helping hand. You've got all that in you. But once you look inside, you feel helpless. I came to speak to a depressed soul that is resident in you. That you have what it takes to make it. It is in you. It is in the house. Look at it with a different eye. 
and awaken the sleeping giant and say I am the righteousness of God I will be what God said I will be I will do what God said I will do I am a Solomon who feels I am a little child but God from the balcons of heaven sees a king in a child sees a priest in a house sees a manager in a house sees a prosperous child in a child God sees what you don't see God didn't create uselessness he created perfection you are the best that you can be in the midst of COVID you've got what it takes to make it to succeed and to prosper because faithful is he that called you somebody say it is in the house It's in the house. I am not empty. I am not useless. I am not without parents who sowed good seeds in me. They may not have been righteous, but they were righteous things they did. So Mr. Deliverer who conducts deliverance, don't just tell me about the wrong things that my fathers and my mothers did. Can you remind me about the good things they did? They put me on the breast when you were not there. They spent sleepless nights for me. You were not there. What gives you the audacity just to come and tell me how wicked my parents were? I was sick. They took me to the hospital. They sacrificed their pain just for me. They lost everything to help me be what I am today. There was a moment when my father decided to divorce my mother. And I was just a couple of months old. Just about two or three months old. My father said, you are going, go back to your people, I don't need you anymore. My mother decided not to go. Because she said, where will I take my boy? He's too young. Let me suffer so that my boy can become something and what dares you to tell me that my mother was wicked what makes you think she was so wicked that she never saw anything righteous my fathers my mothers did what was right that is why i am here solomon says i am here because of what my father david did you are here because of what your parents did for your information, you can call me father. Yes, spiritually, I am not your biological father. You've got a father who gave birth to you. You've got a mother who gave birth to you. Give honor to whom honor is due. I am not. There is somebody who sacrificed for you. So as a Solomon, when you sit on the throne, don't think your fathers were nothing and they accomplished nothing. Don't attribute all that success to yourself. There's somebody who went through pain to get you to where you are. There's somebody who shed tears of pain and rejection and dejection just to get you educated, just to get you get to where you are. Don't be foolish and think it is your wisdom that has brought you this far. God says, remember, it is the Lord who gives you power to make wealth. And I came to prophesy to you, as you go forward, remember you're not going alone. You are going with the praises, with the prayers, with the sacrifices, with the fastings of the fathers and the mothers and the patriarchs and the matriarchs who have been there before. They prayed for the this day but they couldn't get there but they pushed you forward to get there your success is their success because they prayed for it they fasted for it they sacrificed for it 
the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 seeing now we are surrounded by a, a great cloud of witnesses let us not uh, give up but let's run this race with perseverance because father Abraham no, you mention all the fathers of the past. The Bible says they are cheering us. We are surrounded because they look forward to see this day. Their success is in the fact that you have seen this day. Therefore, I will succeed. I will make it. So it's in the house because our fathers put it in the house. They laid the foundation. They put the materials together to get us successful. You also want to know that Solomon did not look for timber. Solomon did not look for anything to build the house of the Lord. His father David prepared all the materials for him. Your fathers have brought you this far. Their prayers have brought you this far. They may not have given you money. And one thing I know about the African culture, someone can be a witch, a typical witch, yet in their witchcraft, they know there is God. In their witchcraft, once in a while, when things just go wrong, they bow their knee and pray to Jehovah above. It is in the house. Therefore, our prayer point for this week is God give me wisdom to govern. Somebody say that. God give me wisdom to govern. Say that again. God give me wisdom to govern. Because if you lack wisdom to govern, you will mismanage what has been put in the house already. The resources are there. God give me wisdom to govern. What am I governing? Because I don't see nothing present. I don't see nothing physically present. There is something in you. And you know how I know? Because the devil doesn't sleep on you. He doesn't sleep over you. He panics. And I want you to understand that the devil can peep into your life spiritually and see what you can see. Because you see physically. The devil sees spiritually. That is why he sees what you don't see. He sees it and he sees it because it is there. Somebody say it is there. Come on, look at yourself and say it is there. I may not see it, but it is there. I may not hold it, but it is there. I may not feel it, but it is there. I may not touch it, but it is there. It is there. And because it is there, God give me wisdom to manage or to govern. Because I need to be a good steward of what God has put in me. Instead of you thinking the people who lived before the outbreak of COVID were lucky. I want to remind you that what it takes to survive and to be successful, to be prosperous in this season, it is in the house. Wisdom to govern. But in order for you to really understand and govern yourself properly and govern your life, I propose, number one, that you need wisdom to identify the difference. It takes wisdom to identify the difference because if you lack the wisdom to identify the difference, you will fight those people who are different from you. Your success is in the ability to identify the difference. We are not all the same. We are not all the same. We are not all gifted the same. I am gifted to do what I'm doing. For you to be successful, you don't need to do exactly what I'm doing. We just have to know how to coexist in our differences of gifts, in our differences of opinions. So if you are a soul, when you look at a David, do not see an enemy, see a helper. 
When you find a successful person, don't conclude that Balayonfwa, don't conclude that they, are, uh, they, they have set themselves up. No, God has brought them into your life and in your path so that you can embrace them and learn from them. Now, the best way the devil will keep you down is by uh, keeping you to only associate with people who are down. I'll say that again. The best way the devil will keep you down is by allowing you to only associate with people who are down. Because once you are in darkness, you have no idea what light looks like. It is only when you step in brighter lights, that's when you realize that actually there is something better than darkness. Don't call people who are in light uh, a prideful. They are just in the light. Which means that you can also get into your light. And you'll be able to see clearer than you sing right now. You have to identify the difference. When you meet something different, then you have to ask a good question. Why is this different from that? How can I bring two differences to coexist? That is the beginning point of our success. Don't make conclusions. Don't ask wrong questions. Number two, I propose that then we need wisdom to manage the differences. We need wisdom to manage the differences. Most of the times when we come across differences, when we come across something that is different, we repel it. No, that is why God did not just create all of us the same. Pastor Ben has got hair. Chibuta doesn't have hair. By God's design. So instead of us incarcerating people without hair, we have to live with them. Probably we need to do this maybe. Let's get all people without hair. Put them in prison. Pastor Chwenda will lead the way. <laughs> How do we live? With people who don't go to the barber shop. Because these guys, they are bringing other people's businesses down. They are not an economic. Uh, <laughs> we are not the same. We are not the same, but we need to manage our differences. When we walk in this place, I see things because of the way I am made. Walked in here, I saw something that was supposed to be there. I said, Martin, remove that. I saw a little paper that was here. It was down here, right here. I asked Martin to pick it up. But how many of us passed seeing this white little paper? Here. Right here. Because for me, it's that little thing, no matter how powerful the worship is, I'm distracted. I sat here, I saw cobwebs. And I'm like, how can we be here with cobwebs? We are different. If you don't see nothing, that's how you are wired. I will coexist with you. Because you also do things that I'm unable to do. But I will spot things that other people will not. I looked up there, I saw cobwebs. Now you can see them there. And my spirit went down. When I look at you, I am already feeling something by just how you're looking. That's me. I feel something already. Either the presence of the Lord.
Of course, I'm getting over it. But it was a big bother for me when I see someone not putting colors correctly. It was a big bother. You can have a brilliant idea and suggestion. It would take me a while for me to start understanding what you're talking about. Because already you have offended me. How can you do that? Especially if you're married. How cruel is your spouse to let you out of the door with what you're wearing? If you want to divorce, I'll support you. But that's, that's, that's me. That's my world. But then I realized it was a big bother. I need to coexist with people who annoy me. Have you ever had people in life who just annoy you? Number one, they pop up at the time you don't want them. They're like a rat in the house. You know how, how rats pop up? When visitors come, that's when a rat just passes, just in front. What? You are just... It's, it's, I think some, some rats are so prophetic, they will know when visitors are coming. So there are people who just annoy you. There are people... But understand this, that... While they do that, they have certain strengths that you need. So don't close them out because of those little things. They have certain abilities that will cross you later on in life. That is why David, when he becomes king, he had to embrace people like Abner, Joab. Now, these are two different individuals. They couldn't see eye to eye. Two different individuals. And that is, that's how come Joab killed Abner. But David was upset. Now, when you look at Abner, Abner was, was a crazy guy. Was a crazy guy. Because when Saul died, it is Abner who, who incited Saul's son to declare himself king over Israel. Joab remained with David. Loyal. Abner was making his entry into the kingdom using the young son of Saul. But when they differed over an opinion, Abner shifted camps and came to David's camp. But these two people could not see eye to eye. Job killed Abner. Despite all that Abner did against David, David said, you did need to kill him. I needed him. I needed him and he said because of what you've done you'll pay for the consequences what am I saying to you they are people who look insignificant they are just annoying you don't close them out don't close them out completely just know how to handle them number three I suggest that I suggest, number three, that in order to govern ourselves with wisdom, we need now the wisdom for management. Now, when I talk about wisdom for management, it comes down to how do we manage the resources within ourselves? How do you manage what God has put on your life? I listened to Dr. Mumba. He was testifying when he was in Bible school in Dallas, Texas. One of the lecturers, I think he was a guest a lecturer, came and he began to testify how he went to Russia and three people manifested demons and he casted them out. And from there, he has written three books on how to cast out demons. Then Dr. Mumba sat there and said, how many demons have I cast out in my life? I haven't written even a single sentence about that. It sounds funny, but the man who has casted out three demons has made money out of the three demons he has casted by selling books. Dr. Mumba says, me, who has casted thousands of demons, I haven't made money because I haven't managed my gift. Hear me. People who are successful 
are not successful because they are more gifted than you. They are successful because they have learned how to manage the little they have. Even in the midst of plenty, if you cannot think business, if you cannot think money, you will never make money. And if you realize so much, people who are very vocal have got nothing. Even wisdom they don't have. If you look at the majority of our politicians, they are empty. Most of them. And I can point at them, I can be better than that one, that one, that one, that one. Including some presidents. I can be better than them. But you know what has made them be that? The little they have, they make noise about it and convince you to wake up at 04 to line up to vote for them. Wow, isn't that good? Ichikopo makes you wake up at 4 to line up. And you make them kings. Can we talk about this? Can we talk about this? How many kings have you provided or have you made and you are, you are still a slave? The Bible says this poor man saved a city and yet no one remembered him. You have no idea. You think, you know, to watch land, we were just talking. You gave someone a billion dollar idea. You have no idea. Why? Because you don't value what you have. Manage, package what you have. Manage, package what you have. Manage, package what you have. Because presentation is also key. Presentation is very key. Manage and package what you have. Once you acquire wisdom to manage five minutes, I'm done. Then decide to be a contributor. Because one of our values is the kingdom of God. We value the kingdom of God. We value the kingdom of God. Say that with me. We value the kingdom of God. Say that with me. We value the kingdom of God. So once you realize that you are part of the kingdom of God, decide to be a contributor. Decide to be a contributor. To be a contributor, I suggest three questions that you have to ask and answer. And I'm giving you this as your homework this week. This is your homework this week. First of all, I want you to raise your right hand and say, I will be a contributor. Now, to be a contributor, just, don't just think finances. There are many things. Some of you are like, how can I be a contributor? I've got no money. There is... Hey, Wena, there is grass outside there. You can go and cut. You're a contributor. Don't just think money. That. I will worship properly. You are being a contributor. It's not just money. If you are stuck with money, you will never make money. If you always think that what makes you be useful is money, you will never have money. Because money is a product of what you do. I'll say that again. Money is a product of what you do. If you have money and you don't do nothing, you're a thief. Who cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Where did it come from? That's why you find people are being followed. Where did you get this money from? Because you need to do something to make money. Say that with me. Do something to make money. Say that again. If we are broke, it means we are not doing anything. Can we face this? Don't look at me that way. If, and I'm not saying you, I'm saying we. If we are broke, it means we are not doing... Is that fair? No, don't talk, don't, talk, don't talk like that. We have to talk like this. So you decide to be a contributor. 
So the question number one you ask in order to be a contributor. Now, I also want to say, being a member of this church, you decide to be a contributor. You are not here just to consume and live. You must be a contributor. Just know where you seated, somebody had to arrange that seat. Where you seated, somebody had to pay for electricity. Where you seated, Martin had to pick the paper from there. Question number one to be a contributor. What am I going to contribute? Don't be quick to say, I don't have. No, you have. At least you can buy wigs to come and distribute to the people without hair. What am I going to contribute? That is a million dollar question. Even Peter, the, the scripture that we like quoting, when Peter says, silver and gold have I none, he says, but such as I have. So what such do you have? No one is empty. Number two question. How am I going to contribute? How am I going to contribute? You may have something, but if you don't have means of doing it, it's not going to happen. You need to have a plan of how you're going to do that. If you want to cut the grass outside, you have to ask yourself, how am I going to cut the grass? Meaning, what tools do I need to get the job done? What tools do I need to get the job done? And finally, when am I going to contribute? And I'll put a fourth one. When am I going to contribute? No, no, I'll leave it at three. When am I going to contribute? Don't say when I become rich. Remember, give and it shall be given to you. Much is in the little that you give. If you are looking for much, use the little that you have to plant for the harvest that you expect to have. You have no harvest if you didn't plant anything. We are all contributors. We can make this thing work. Let us pray. Now, Heavenly Father, I thank you that you always hear me, like Jesus said. We bring this year with all the expectations of being successful, all the expectations of being happy, and all the expectations of serving you. We bring what we have and what we don't have. But remind us that it is in the house. We have it. We are all contributors. We make the kingdom of God. Release us into our gifts. Release us into our grace. That we make the kingdom what you want it to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are visiting in our area, you can come to Victory Papa Church of Chiwara Road in Kanae, CBU East Kent. Our services start at 08300 hours prayer and intercession. Our main services is from 09300 hours to 1200 hours. The prayer room is from 1730 to 1900 hours. For more information, contact us on 0700-2000.